Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Our hay is almost ready to bale. Uh, usually we have it on the ground cut for about 14 days before we bale it. Due to bad weather, um, it's taken a lot longer to dry this time. Um, it was pretty much dry and then we've had rain and damp, uh, uh, damp, after, damp days with just a little bit of drizzle and a fair bit of dew. But it's pretty close now and hopefully tomorrow it will be warm enough to actually bale it all. This is our baler. It's a New Holland Hayliner 317 baler. Um, these are pretty good balers. Um, so this is a small square baler like we would normally see for horse feed and things like that. The way it works is this drops down and uh, down a little bit closer to the ground. These fingers here rotate and as they come round through the hay, they pick it up and flick it up into this chamber in here. There's two spikes that stick down there and they sweep the hay across into the baling chamber. <coughs> Once it's in the baling chamber, it gets compressed by the plunger which is in here and uh, and gets pushed into a bale. So around the back of our baler is where the bales come out. This here is the bale chamber where they get compressed and turned into bales. So the straw, the hay gets packed into here very, very tightly. This is the knotter mechanism and it's an amazingly clever mechanism. Um, and it's fascinating the way it works. There's, let's start from the beginning. The twine is in here and we have two lines of twine that run to the baler, to the uh, knotter. Underneath here, there's a couple of large needles that punch up through the bale and bring the string around it. So, let you down into the baling chamber. The bales, the straw comes in and gets compressed against these two pieces of string and they move down to create the bale. This mechanism here actuates the knotter. As, as this bale moves underneath it, it turns it round and when it gets to the top, it actuates the knotter. Those needles come up and in here, there's two little pairs of fingers that grab the string, both pieces of string, twist it round and then hold on to the end while the knot is tied. Uh, and there's a little bit of maintenance we've got to do to this, so you'll be able to see in a minute a little bit more inside it. Um, and yeah, so the first job to do today is to go through and grease the whole machine. There's grease nipples all over this, um, and it's really important to go through and grease them before you start. Um, like most farm machinery, this has now been sitting for 12 months uh, between, since it was last used. Um, oh, the other thing that is quite important about the bale chamber here is at the back here there is a hydraulic ram. This piece here floats up and down. <coughs> the more pressure on the hydraulic ram, the tighter it squeezes the bale here. And the tighter you squeeze it here, the harder it is for it to push it through. And this is what sets how heavy your bales are. This hydraulic ram is adjusted here on this little hydraulic reservoir and pump. So we have an adjustment screw here and we have a pressure gauge here to tell us uh, the pressure it's on. Um, so this just gives me a rough idea um, and I'm not quite sure how many pounds per square inch equates to what bale weight. Uh, you just pick up a bale and then you come and adjust this depending on how you think the bales feel. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and grease this now and uh, then we'll do a little bit of work on the knotters. 
Okay, so the other piece of maintenance that's really important to do on these balers before you start uh, baling is there's two little knives inside, one in each knotter, um, to cut the string after the knot has been tied. If these knives are not sharp, it gives you all sorts of problems with the knotter not working properly and you get only one string tied and things like that. So we just I'm going to show you now how to take these not these knives out and give them a quick sharpen. I'll just bring you in a bit closer and you can just see the bottom of the knife down here. Now some balers you can just unscrew the knife blade down here. On this particular baler you can't, you've got to pull the knotter apart a little bit further to get it out. Uh, so I'll show you how we do that now. Okay, so we're going to start by undoing the this bolt down here and this allows us to lift the knotter up uh, to get slightly better access to the knives underneath. And now we can lift, lift this up to get more easy access. Now that we've flipped the knotter upside down, we can see this bit, this shiny bit here. This is called the bill hook, and this is the part that I was telling you about with the two little fingers that grabs the string as it comes past. Um, these bits in here rotate the string around and bring it through the bill hook. The bill hook then turns and pulls the string tight and this knife then comes past and cuts the string off. So we're just, we're going to drop this back down. Uh, there's a split pin up here we've got to take out. Then we can lift this back up and pull the knife out. This split pin is a real pain to try and get into to, to undo it. I do like the balers where you can just unbolt the knife off the, the rest of the mechanism. Okay, so this is the knife unit here, and this is the the surface that we have to sharpen. And it's not the easiest to get into on this one. Um, and the easiest way, to, or the only way really to do it is with an oil stone. So we'll go and uh, give this a quick sharpen now. Okay, so I've got a little stone here. The big one doesn't fit in on this one. Um, so we're just going to give this, this face a nice uh, touch up. Last year I did this with a file and it's quite hard steel and the file doesn't cut it particularly well. But it's really important to have these knives sharp on here or yeah, your knotters just don't work well at all. So this is a really this is a piece of maintenance that needs to be done uh, every year before you start baling because they always rust up a little bit while they've been sitting for the 12 months in the shed. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do to, to try and look after them. Okay, so we've got this nice and sharp and shiny now. I always like to just check it on a piece of rag or something, make sure it cuts the rag smoothly, and then you know it's sharp. So we just put this back in in the reverse of the way we we took it out. And 
sometimes it can be a little tricky to to maneuver it in and out of here you've just got to find the spot where it actually sits comfortably in here sometimes on some balers you've also got to undo this screw here to, to get it back in and I may have to do that on this one today Yep, I'm going to have to take this one off, this piece off too. Sometimes you can get it back in, sometimes you end up knocking your nice shiny face around a little bit too much. Usually you end up dropping something trying to do this job. There we go, that's back in. That goes on. The spring goes on and the nut goes on. Always just get a little bit of an idea about how far the nut is on before you take it off. This is an adjustment that uh, um, the tighter you do this spring up, the tighter the bill hook holds onto the string. Um, so try and put it back in the same spot it was when you undid it. And then we can drop this back down again and put our split pin back in. I only spread the end on this a little tiny bit because of how often I've got to take it out to resharpen it. Right, and then our bolt goes back in. Now the other piece of maintenance we need to do on these balers before we get going is there's a couple of gearboxes. There's a main gearbox on the side here and there's another gearbox stuck in underneath all the covers in here. So we've just got to check the oil levels in these. Now these have a, an oil level plug in them that's quite awkward to get at. It's a bit easier if we take this other, other cover plate off. So we just want to undo undo this level plug and just make sure that there's a little bit of oil in it or that there is still oil in it yep there's oil running out of there still so we can see when I took the bung out it ran out we're not on particularly level ground so it's showing up as being a little bit over full at the moment but if we park it on level ground that will be pretty much spot on and then just do the level plug up again. Okay, so we're just hooking the baler up to the little Massey Ferguson 178 now. Um, we've backed it up and, and hooked it on. I just thought I would quickly tell you about a little bit about the PTOs. There are this blind shaft coming out the back. Now this one runs at 540 revs per minute. There's two other ones you okay you might see. There's a 700 and I think it's 720 speed. You rarely see that one now. Um, and the most common one on modern tractors is a thousand. All of the old tractors had the 540. There were two different sizes. This is the most common. It was only little small tractors like the um, Grey Fergie that had the smaller one. Now, to hook up the shafts, this shaft here has got splines in it that have to line up with the splines on this one. Now, there's a lock on them here. This button here, you have to push in and hold in uh, while you try and line up the splines. 
so we push this in and on a lot of them you can actually turn this there's certain um, certain types of tractor that you can't um, the clutches just don't disengage so we get that on and then we've got to slide it right the way on oh. oops I uh, should have pushed that in a little bit further Oh, before I push it right on, you'll notice there's some little notches cut out of it here. That's where the lock go sits uh, to stop it coming undone again. Push that right in. Wriggle it right on. Sometimes you've got to wriggle a fair bit. Um, and then this button should pop right out. I'm going to need two hands to do that, so I'm going to put the camera down. Um, and uh, So our hay is finally ready to bale. Usually we leave it sitting in a windrow like this for 14 days to dry. Um, we don't turn it because then we keep more of the green, green straw in here. Um, this has been sitting here a bit longer than the 14 days because we got 12 mils of rain a couple of days ago or last week and it's been drizzling ever since. Today we have beautiful weather for baling. Uh, so this got turned this morning. Um, and just to help dry out the last little bit of moisture. Uh, we've got another thunderstorm coming tonight, so I'm going to get on and bale this, and we've got the help of a couple of friends to come and pick the bales up today, which is going to be a great help. Okay, so how do we tell when our hay is ready to bale? The first test to make sure it's dry enough is grab a small piece like that, <coughs> bend it, round three times and it should all break um, if it's not dry enough it won't break like that and you need to leave it for a couple more days
thanks to my wife, sister-in-law and sister-in-law's mate and the three dogs for helping us bring in the hay that afternoon. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, maybe learned something from it and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.